Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Devs on Devs in Production. My name is Chuko Fili and today we'll be talking about Google Cloud Trace. So Google Cloud Trace is a distributed tracing system that collects latency data and helps you find performance bottlenecks in production. So you know how sometimes when you have your API requests responding at maybe 100 or 1000 or 2000 or 5000 milliseconds, it is usually difficult to diagnose those kinds of problems. And this is where Cloud Trace can come in to help. It will introspect that request from entry point all the way to exit by gathering latency data for the main request and all the sub requests or subroutines that he may have performed from the actual, you know, for example, controllers to down to business logic or down to database requests and calls. It will collect all that data and then display them in the Google Cloud Console. And then you can decide or define whatever issues or remedies you may have for them. It essentially gives you information to help you keep your application healthy. It's usually easier to just show. So I'm going to show a demo, a quick demo of how to set it up and how to do a simple trace. Let's jump into it. So visit the cloud.google.com forward slash trace and then visit the documentation section which will tell us a lot more about how to get trace up and running. Now we are using the same Stackdriver example repository which is already previously set up from the previous tutorials if you've been following. If you haven't, you can get the repository here. GitHub Chukal Philly Stackdriver dash example. I already have it set up so we're just going to dive right in and set up trace. Now. So Cloud Trace helps you keep track of things like how long a request cycle takes, all the actual nodes it hits, you know, up down to database queries. Setting it up is quite easy and straightforward and the service, technically I think it's free, uh, but I, you can always check the pricing page for that, but I think it's, I think it's free. Um, but well, we're gonna always check the pricing later on. Uh, right now, what we want to do is set it up for uh, Node.js application. Now, there are different ways to set Trace up, but what I'm going to focus on is using the Google Trace API directly with the Google Cloud Trace SDKs. And the SDKs for Node.js um, are under the Node.js section, and you will see how to download and install the package for Google Cloud Trace. Just um, hang on a second. Okay, this is for uh -huh, Cloud Trace Library, Node.js. I mean, of course, you can use it with Open Telemetry and Open Census. It, it, it is compatible with a lot of li um, uh, open source uh, trace packages. So, but we're going to be using the Cloud Trace SDK directly with the Cloud, Cloud Trace APIs. Okay, so we have to install the Cloud Trace agent. I'm going to do that for both the front end and the back end. And while that's installing, I'm going to modify the files to include our trace initializer. Great. Now, there's two lines that I think I just need to explain. I already explained the service context from a previous video when discussing this, the debugger. The service context just tells the trace agent how to, you know, organize and keep all the trace that it has run for your queries. Uh, the ignore method tells it not to run trace on anything that includes options and enhance database reporting. As it clearly states, if you have any database calls in your queries, trace will capture and log all of that. As usual, you can always turn this off if you do not need it because key important information, if trace is enabled, it can, and you know, you, you are, you risk the possibility of 
um, showing sensitive data in your cloud portal. So once you enable trace in all your applications, as much as it gives you visibility, you also then need to be uh, mindful of who you share your credentials or who you have, uh, who you give access to your reporting uh, interface in, with the cloud trace. Um, I'm sure there are also strategies to be able to obfuscate, uh, um, you know, sensor or redact data, but I just wanted to point it out there just in case there's anybody who's going to use it. So you won't use it blindly without knowing some of the uh, repercussions of using trace. Okay. I'm going to install this also in the front end repo, but to be honest, I'm not sure it has that much benefit. Mostly has benefit for the back end. And then I will do the same thing for the front end app. Well, I don't think we need enhanced database reporting, but I'll just leave it on for brevity's sake. Now, I'm gonna bump my version number. It's just a habit. I can use NPM version bump, of course, but hey, this is much quicker right now. All right, and I'm going to deploy this. Okay, using scaffold, but it's Now, as with almost all Google products, you need to enable the CloudTrace API. The CloudTrace API is what would allow you use the trace service. Um, remember to follow through with the documentation if your environment doesn't quite match my environment. So if you're using maybe Python or Ruby or whatever language you're using that may not be Node.js or doesn't quite fit the folder, folder structure which we're using or what we're doing in this example tutorial, then just dig through the documentation uh, and you'll be able to find answers. This is just to demonstrate the power that comes with the CloudTrace API. I'm going to speed this up a bit and then move on. Now that we have the CloudTrace API uh, up and running and we have the packages um, deployed in our Node.js application, I'm just going to check, make sure that my application has been deployed and you can see version two is there and we are good to go. Okay. So we have Trace enabled and everything seems to be up and running. Uh, I think I already mentioned, don't forget to enable the trace API. If you know when you go to the trace interface, you won't be able to see anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a couple records. Okay. I've added a couple of queries. I'm going to also do a quick refresh and yeah, just generally play around with, you know, the application. Um, all right. Now let's go to the cloud trace interface. Let's go to home trace overview. All right. And Here we go. So, um, there you go. As you can see, we have visual. So I have the service staff driver backend production and it, it tells me everything that has been happening with each of the requests. This is the front end and you can see there's all sorts of information there. I'm looking for one that has, there we go. Now 
notice this is how beautiful trace gives us information i added data and it tells me shows me the path shows me how long in milliseconds or seconds each request took it also shows me how long my database request took so notice this the actual data this is the database this is all the information right down to the actual save uh, an update or read or write even the endpoint in the back end even though this was a front end request so the request came through the front end but it tracked even the back end request and the endpoints and the call stack you have so much information at your fingertips and look notice it gave me total latency but then it also can give you latency for each of the requests. That's how powerful Trace is. And remember what I mentioned, I've mentioned this earlier in the in a talk or when, when I was giving uh, the talk, I said that it can expose information, right? So you need to be careful who you give access to this interface. And you need to be careful how you implement Trace. Make sure that your permissions are set up properly. Make sure you only give authorized personnel access to all of this data because then you may be exposing information or customer information without even knowing it if you're uh, that kind of a company who, ha who has or keeps uh, customer information. And that wraps it up for Google Cloud Trace. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, please do not forget to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell icon. Well, is it here or is it here? Well, I know it's down there. <laughs> so if you want to get notified every single time I release a new video, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys soon.